everyone, and welcome to the Barcoding Huddle. I'm your host, Jody Costa, the VP of Marketing for Barcoding Incorporated. Barcoding is a supply chain automation innovation company dedicated to helping organizations like yours become more efficient, accurate, and connected. And today, we have some very special partners that are going to be joining me to talk about how we may use RFID technologies in the healthcare space. And I'm really excited to dive into this topic because um, I think this is needed more than ever to make sure that we are doing things the right way and keeping people safe. Um, so I'm excited to tell my panelists to come on to the camera and join me and uh, we're going to get ready to huddle. So uh, please just turn off or turn on your camera and uh, we'll get rolling. Awesome. We got Jeff. Thank, thank you, Jeff. We got Favik. Great. Well, welcome to both of you to the barcoding huddle and uh, excited to have you participate with us today. Uh, Zerify, thank you for sponsoring this conversation. We're excited to um, to bring bring some light to your organization to our to our community. So Zerify, you know businesses get the data they need to drive performance and flexibility with your passive UHF RFID tagging and sensing solutions. Um, so you guys cover all types of enterprise assets from small tools to large equipment. And in this case, you know, we'll be talking specifically about healthcare. So welcome, Bavik. Hey, everyone. Good, good morning uh, and good afternoon to, you know, everybody else. Um, my name is Bavik Tagara, and I'm the director of sales and solution at Zerify. Uh, with the company for eight years and in the industry for 14 years and absolutely love the technology and all the benefit it offers uh, in better management of your asset and process. Uh, just a little bit of background about Zerify. Uh, Zerify has been leading the effort in designing of on metal and rugged RFID tagging solutions. Uh, it was founded by a team of experienced engineers who wanted to solve uh, the challenges of harsh environment and on metal tagging uh, you know, efficiency. Um, at the same time, Zerify has pioneered in the space of healthcare. And over the years, uh, with a lot of experience, uh, research, uh, Zerify has today positioned themselves as a leader in providing uh, RFID tagging solution in healthcare asset space. That's awesome. So, and thank you. I'm looking forward to this, Jody. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, obviously, you're the right person. So welcome. Um, and so also with us today is Sergio Health. So Sergio Health, a technology company whose primary goal is to help hospitals, manufacturers and distributors find efficiencies in their processes. Sounds kind of like here, but I know that they really get into the weeds and help um, hospitals out there really achieve great things. So um, Jeff, could you please introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks for having me today. My name is Jeff Wirtz. I am uh, president of Sergio Health. Uh, I've been in uh, medical devices and the healthcare side of things for about 15 years now. I started off as a, a medical device rep in the field, working with the hospitals, work all the way back to the manufacturers. And uh, now my role with Sergio Health is really kind of a, a great blend of both of those, being able to take my knowledge and experience in the field um, seeing and living a lot of those inefficiencies that take place uh, between the manufacturer of med devices and into the healthcare systems. Um, and so what we've been doing from a Sergio Health perspective is uh, being a cloud-based solution uh, that's modern, easy for end users, typically in the OR and sterile processing uh, departments. Uh, we've developed a number of solutions with direct end user feedback to uh, specifically address the challenges in workflows, in education, in uh, communication, uh, as well as the uh, required documentation from a regulatory standpoint uh, necessary for the processing of, of inventory and equipment necessary for, for the surgeries and patient safety. So a um, whole lot of different functionality that we provide our end users. And I'm really excited to go through the, the role that RFID can and does play in that uh, in, uh, in providing a little more oversight and reducing human, human mistakes. So thanks for having me today. Yeah, thank you for being here. And I absolutely love talking with people who have that firsthand experience. Um, so I know that that's going to be a valuable part of the conversation. And obviously, it's a valuable part of what you bring to the table every day at Sergio Health. So um, thank you for being here with us. All right, so let's kick this huddle off. Um, let's start high level because 
I think that the barcoding audience, um, we're a very wide ranging audience, um, but I think we're seeing some similar trends in healthcare, but let's start there. You know, can you guys start talking to me a little bit about what is the, what is the general atmosphere in the healthcare space today, maybe specifically hospital? Um, and, and what are the, the key challenges that I think that we're seeing out there where technology is starting to become really needed and, and necessary? Bhavik, I'll start with you. So, you know, I, over the years, you know, Zerify has spent a lot of time uh, researching and actually speaking to the end user, uh, the staff in the hospital, you know, the nurses, the surgeon, uh, patient care is the number one priority. Uh, it drives strong patient care. And, and it all re relates to the patient care when it comes to how much time you can provide to patient care. You know, if you're spending a lot of your time doing other things, uh, it reduces a lot of time you can give to your patients. Uh, at the same time, if you can have a lot more time, you can add a lot more surgeries. Uh, a lot of losses in terms of your assets, locating your assets, uh, you know, scheduling, managing inventories is all related to the same thing. So I think in, in general with, with, you know, all the health institution, uh, med device manufacturers, they are not able to give enough time to patient. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of time spent in finding these assets and inventory management. Uh, a lot of losses, which cost them a lot more dollar values. Um, and, and, you know, just in general, how they can improve the whole operations and, and making as many less mistakes as possible, because all of this accounts to how well they're taking care of their patients. Um, yeah, it, it makes sense. So Jeff, I mean, is that the similar sentiment that you're feeling that there's just a lot of pressure and not enough time and, and that we're not going to be able to get everything we need done for the patients? Yeah, I think uh, to kind of expand on that, obviously patient care is, you know, the uh, a center focus for everyone, but now going out of, you know, COVID and, uh, and everyone looking at their financial situations across the industries is really, you know, trying to do more with less. So I think on both the healthcare side and the manufacturers is very, uh, the dynamics have changed significantly. There's a lot more procedures going to outpatient uh, settings, uh, which creates a number of challenges on both sides. So from a healthcare setting, from the hospital's perspective, you're having to you know, do more with less personnel in those facilities. And then from a manufacturer perspective, now you have more facilities that you have to service. And this is expensive equipment um, and critical equipment. You can't have the procedure take place without the necessary um, hardware or instruments that are needed for that procedure. And yeah. now that you're moving things to more facilities, uh, it's become more and more imperative so that to be able to correctly plan and uh, and allocate resources uh, accordingly. And that's only continue to get more challenging. And, uh, and from a hospital perspective and med device side of things, uh, they, they haven't traditionally invested significantly in technology. Um, a lot of them have still re relied on you know, traditional sales processes um, or the manual, you know, tribal knowledge that takes place uh, at a lot of facilities. So I know a lot of them are struggling with, uh, you know, with just staffing, uh, basic things like that to make sure that they have enough equipment. But, um, you know, there's, there's a, a great opportunity for organizations that are somewhat forward thinking to, to build out new solutions and get ahead of their, you know, their competitors in the space. I'm assuming that criticality is what's driving kind of uh, a focus maybe in that brain or as the brain RFID, the RFID space, uh, because it has to. And that's actually a great point <laughs> from, uh, uh, you know, Jeff, I think specifically after COVID, uh, contactless tracking, autonomous tracking has been, uh, you know, pushed a lot more, uh, which obviously helps hospitals save a lot more time and avoid unnecessary purchases. So uh, you know, the, dr the driving after COVID has become even more intense. You know, they are kind of looking into this technology a lot more closer, uh, you know, and, you know, as much autonomous as we can bring in, it's going to help the hospital and they accept it more widely now. Yeah, so I, I think that probably barcoding has seen this. We've been in the barcode RFID space for a long time. Usually once you get over that hesitation, then and, and you get excited about the, the possibility of technology, then suddenly the technology becomes 
uh, magical. <laughs> it can solve all of the problems that you might have, right? And and I know that that's probably uh, a life cycle stage that a lot of people are in. So talk to me. Um, let's start with you, Jeff. Like when you when someone starts to get interested and, and they've come over that hesitation and they're ready to really modernize. Um, what are, what's kind of that sentiment? And then how do you start to talk about a more thoughtful approach? Yeah. Yeah. I think um, it, it's understanding where they're coming from to begin with. So I think a lot of people hear RFID. I mean, it's, it, you know, I think a good analogy right now that's, that's very pertinent is things like AI and, you know, everyone has some experience now with chat GPT and where, you know, having being able to type something in and get a quick answer and it's, you know, it's magical. Mm -hmm where I try to set everyone's expectations or have a conversation with them is that's based off of 20, 25 plus years, however many years of, of structured data analysis and careful work and, and dedication to that specifically. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the healthcare sector, especially many, many things are still, you know, manual analog that, that has not been properly documented. Um, so what, what we try to do is set you know, work with each organization independently and say, where are you at today? What are your clear goals that you want to get there? And how do we get you on a crawl, walk, run pathway to that? Because uh, I think a lot of, you know, organizations that may have gotten involved with different technologies, their, their hope is that they're going to get everything right away. And it does take time and it takes some dedication and it takes setting some uh, realistic goals in the short run of how we can accomplish them uh, to get to get to that point. Yeah, we we found at barcoding sometimes people will say, I want to buy RFID. And it's like, what? So right. it's not that, it's that, that easy. What does that mean? It's, whole solution. it's not a it's not like a thing you go buy. Um exactly. and topic, you see that all the time in your business too. Absolutely. In in fact, you know, uh, what was looked as an implementation challenge in the past, uh, today is viewed by a lot of health institutions as a once in a lifetime opportunity. Uh, to you know, leverage this technology really to you know add the benefits it can bring to the patients, and in general for healthcare providers, you know like automated reconciliation or streamlined procurement, improved recall program, uh, just anonymous data capture and and you know data mining. I think all of those benefits are now looked more closely, uh, and I think the hesitation of you know bringing this technology, implementing it. And also, actually, the word from FDA, which is also very important, you know, this has been and, and Zerify has been speaking with FDA uh, uh, team for many years very closely. Uh, you know, FDA is not aware of any adverse effect of RFID technology in healthcare space. Uh, a lot of questions has always been asked about that. But I think this topic is also very important. Why this has now been more accepted because the word from FDA is also, you know, it's a green light, basically. Oh, that's a good point. That's a good point. So I want to kind of take, so we, we said that it can get, you know, people, there might be some confusion of all the different pieces and parts. Um, can we walk through just a specific example, let's say, uh, and maybe this is where Jeff, you and Baba can kind of go back and forth, but I'd love to just say, all right, Jody now has a need, right? What, what are typically those things that you walk somebody through? Let's make it a little bit more concrete for our viewers. Uh, Jeff, do you want to start? Yeah, yeah I can kind of speak to a specific use case that we've done with with Zerify is um, is around uh, tray tracking. So I think okay. first off, you know, trays these are where uh, surgical instruments are being processed through these these trays. They might go into another container also that that is that they're sterilized in, or they just get wrapped with a uh, with some uh, wrapping. The way that we approach that was, all right, what are the benefits that we can get from this? It's imperative that every single one of those sets goes through the certain uh, milestones for preparedness. So it goes through a washer or it goes through decontamination. It goes through washer, it goes through inspection and assembly, and then it may go through another QA process. And then it goes through a sterilizer, which is kind of like a large oven that they go into to, to kill all the, the, the germs, everything you know, on there. Those are all required prior to going to a sterile environment or field where they're typically stored. So what we we look to address with this is, hey, let's you know uh, set up areas that are specific and and expected to be sterile. And anytime something goes through that hasn't gone through these steps that we track within our software, uh, which is every single person that touched that asset and accomplished all those different milestones, 
uh, making sure that those are complete before it gets to this the sterile environment. If that does happen where it hasn't gone through or been properly documented, alerts go off. Um, so it, it's another level of kind of overview uh, or, or support in an environment that is traditionally very reactive and can be chaotic at times when they're trying to get, you know, hundreds of thousands of items through sometimes on any given day uh, to be able to support a busy uh, OR. And most of the, the profit for these hospitals comes through the OR. So everyone's looking at how do we get more from all of these instruments and, and assets, uh, but then they forget about, you know, how do we support that, the engine that's keeping it going. And they'll put a lot of stress on that department. So what we look at this as is, is a uh, um, doesn't require more additional work to the end users, but it's providing a level of security and safety to ensure that, you know, when everyone's moving really fast, you're not accidentally grabbing a set that hasn't gone through the sterilizer yet, because there's only some very small differences in how those those assets might look. So that that's kind of one use case uh, from an end user perspective. Then the amount of data. Once you start evaluating that data, then you get a lot more insight too. How long is it taking between these different workflows? How long, where is it getting stuck? Then you can start digging in further. So there's a, that's you know one use case, and, and I think that there's many more that we can build on it. Uh, but that's the one that I'm you know particularly really excited about. Yeah. So when you talk about the trays and the instruments, and Bob, if maybe this is where you can get into. Let's get into the weeds a little bit. Um, what's being tagged, and kind of how do we set up infrastructure in order to have those read uh, read times uh, in order to create those kinds of alerts? So, and and that's actually a good point. And just taking it back on the hardware side of the things, you know, I, you know, what they really need today is contactless tracking, uh, mm -hmm. long range tracking. Um, you know, if they can uh, scan multiple assets in in one second, right, in one scan. All of those benefits RFID offers. We all know that. Uh, but I think the other biggest benefits that RFID offers today, and especially what Zerify expertise is, is if you look at sterile processing, it's not technology friendly. These are all harsh environments, autoclave process, high temperature. It goes through gamma radiations or you know vigorous chemical exposures, cleaning. Uh, Passive RFID uh, and tags from Zerify has proven uh, to survive all those autoclave cycles uh, mm -hmm. and hundreds of those. Uh, and I think that itself is, is, is where the technology has grown today. Uh, and with that, if you can get the benefits of scanning those tags autonomously, um, you know, you can have like a fixed reader set up, um, you know, ceiling readers, uh, gateway readers, uh, all of those uh, scanning technologies are out there. Uh, there's, you know, uh, shelf readers where you can have all your trays and cards sitting in the shelf. Uh, it's autonomously going to scan each and every uh, tag sitting on it. So the benefits that RFID has brought into this uh, industry and the way they are now looking into this is, is a lot more um, better. Um, and like I said, you know, uh, just comparing it with what other technologies can do, the big benefit that RFID, passive RFID in specifically has is when you have these sterile processing and high temperature exposure, you want a tag or a chip that's battery free, you know, battery less. Uh, and that's where, you know, passive RFID has a long lasting uh, standability. Yeah, well, that's awesome about, you know, you make a great point about the sterilization process has got to be brutal on a tag. Um, yeah. But from the barcoding, the integrator standpoint, I mean, this is, it's just so, familiar, right? It's like we're all solving these problems across all different industries. I couldn't help but think when you went through that example, Jeff, it's it's so similar to what we're doing in terms of returnable bins and trays. Um, so, so similar, right? They go yep. through a sterilization process. They have to, you know, be, be, there's a compliance element, right? We cannot have, you know, a bin that's been like out and, and gross be filled with produce, right? Um, so it's just very interesting to see all the different ties in and then how you know, you have to have a great software, you have to have great infrastructure and hardware, you have to have great services around that, you have to have people who can put the, all, the whole thing together. So um, and the, the first call anytime we get an inquiry uh, today, and I think, uh, you know, Jeff can also, I think the call or, or any email we get uh, for, for these uh, applications, the first question we get is, hey, can this survive, you know, the autoclave cycle? Or can yeah. this uh, work through, uh, you know, ETO or gamma radiations. Um, and I think Jeff has 
you know, also pointed a great, uh, uh, you know, point over here is, um, you know, once you have the hardware technology and infrastructure in place, uh, you know, Sergio and, and Jeff's team can do a lot with the data. Mm -hmm. you know, and just providing the real time uh, inventory and real time location of every asset, uh, even with passive RFID. So uh, today, if you bring together all those uh, pieces, uh, I think it's a very complete end to end solution. I love that. And so if we stick with the, the tray, the surgical tray tracking, um, Jeff, I'm wondering if we can kind of, again, take that walkthrough, but how do we, how do we start to think about that in terms of readiness? So I, maybe my, my operating room has always had, we've always done things the way we've always done things and we know it works. So how do I get ready to tackle something like this? If, if I'm saying, I like what you're saying, you know, I like what you're saying. Yeah. Right. So what kind of steps do I take? Yeah. So like, this is where I go back to where, where are people starting from? And, and unfortunately there's still a lot of hospitals out there that still do things with pen and paper. So those trays that are going through getting processed are still completely 100% human reliant going through with a pen and paper marking things off. So where we start is if you want to get to the level where you can automatically see where everything's at, at the push of a button, you need to start, you know, at a baseline of putting the information in. Uh, that's where we work with the work with any organization to kind of clean the data up, garbage in, garbage out concept. But then discussing very initially what are your what are your immediate goals that you have for this? Because you can start very small and say, you know, where where are their losses taking place? Where is the the biggest ROI for you? Is it managing loaner trays so that you can see when they're actually coming in and going out? Uh, we can put processes in in for that, so that you don't have to worry about um, those assets going missing or or being you know being on the hook for paying for those things. So it really kind of comes down to where are you at right now? What kind of system do you have in place, and what are the goals for that? Because uh, everything right now is still very reliant on scanning the the tray and then having the you know somebody manually input what's being done to that. There's always going to be some component of that because what we're doing on the processing side of things for for the sterile processing does require some of that hands-on interaction. Uh, yeah. But again, kind of the use case that I went through is the benefit of the RFID being that oversight to make sure that those steps aren't missed. Uh, and that everything is documented according to what regulatory requires. And then once you get up into the LR, you're changing hands between different teams. And a lot of times there's a miscommunication between sterile processing, uh, whoever's case prepping, and the LR, and then what's actually getting utilized. So getting real usage information from a procedure because you have many trays that might go in, but don't necessarily get used, and then they go back out and they might get stored on the shelf, or they go down to decontamination when you're reliant completely on barcodes that may or may not be affixed permanently, right. you lose you lose visibility to what was really being used. And it also can create more workflow requirements for the OR staff to have to go in and scan trays as to what was used or not. Yeah. So there's a lot of opportunities to reduce the manual input or manual requirements from from people, um, but where I I always go back to is in that first conversation. You know, what brought you? What got you excited about it? And then, all right, how do we take that excitement and put it into a bite-sized piece that we can realistically accomplish for you in the short term, knowing that you can continue building on this? And that's that's um, you know, kind of delaying some of that overall gratification that people are looking for, but understanding you're on the pathway towards that. And uh, and you know, if you can track the the tray. There's a million other assets that you might want to be able to track that we can, that you can leverage the same antenna for um, in those systems uh, to, to make sure that you're, you know, you're loss prevention, all those different opportunities. Yeah, Bob, I'm sure there's other, your brain's probably going with all the other places too that you guys get involved. I mean, like you said, once you get a taste of this, you know, maybe give a couple of examples. I actually, you know, uh... In last, I think, a year or two, uh, we have seen a great amount of interest actually from device manufacturers and distributors implementing or accepting or looking into RFID-enabled loaner system service, uh, especially for procedures relying on loaning instruments and sets, uh, consigned inventories of implants and devices. Um, you know, and there are actually RFID-enabled containers which carries these trays and sets. 
which actually helps them in you know completely digitizing the inventory management in trunk in the field or at the institution so the right from the point of manufacture to the distributions to the field and then to the institutions like hospitals it can provide them a complete tracking process mm -hmm. uh, and that's where they are kind of relying because you know like jeff mentioned this point in the past in before um a lot of hospitals are loaning these instruments and sets now uh, they don't carry a lot of these uh, in their inventory. So it now comes down to med device manufacturers accepting more or looking more into these technologies where they can better manage these loaner sets, which goes out from their uh, you know, uh, manufacturing to distribution process. So yes, I think it, it, it has got down to you know, manufacturers also pushing and bringing this technology to the institutions. Uh, and if institution has this infrastructure in place, uh, and you know they have also looked into this infrastructure quite closely now, and it's you know just from how we have seen over the years, it's a lot more easier really to start with tray level um, because tray level the tag attachment is quite simple uh, and it's very reliable, very durable. The tray, or is it each instrument and the tray? At this point, I'm just talking about the tray level, just the tray. Okay. Uh, with instruments, there is. You know, there's a whole discussion around that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was, I didn't even know I was kidding. <laughs> Actually, Jeff, you brought this right. Yeah. There is a different set of challenges with the instruments, uh, not really with the technology today, and not with the software or the hardware. It's more on the attachment of the. Yeah. Uh, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, wow, that would be very tricky. But even with, you know, and Jeff can, you know, share more light on this one. Even with, you know, the trail level, you can still have like, you know, a parent child relationship between the instruments and. Yeah. and so, you are still able to track the tray autonomously with RFID. Uh, and you know you can obviously uh, do the reconciliation with instruments uh, at the database level. And just to kind of expand on that, um, I think that you know we're talking to instruments and trays as obviously that's very significant on the hospital level where there's even more expense, probably ROI opportunity between the manufacturer and hospital is around the sterile packed uh, implants. So just kind of for context, every single one of these procedures, you have a total knee procedure. Uh, they've, they've gotten better over the years, but you still might send in, especially for a revision, three tubs with hundreds of items that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. Um, and when all of those are going in, they rely on people in the field, like what I used to do to actually manage that into the hospital and out. And there, there's always this gray area between the hospital and the manufacturer as to who's responsible if things go missing there. Um, and so I know the hospitals are on, on the hook for a lot of consignment inventory that are on the shelf and the manufacturers typically manage a lot of that. So there's a lot of trust that gets put in place uh, as it relates to managing that type of inventory. And I think RFID is a tremendous opportunity for that um, because all that inventory might have to go back to the distributor, to the warehouse for them to check all that back in. And that is a significant time investment for them to do that, but it's necessary for how expensive all that inventory is. So when you start looking at things and doing on-site audits, the more organizations that are getting involved with RFID from the further upstream, I think present uh, significant value to a hospital if the hospital also puts in you know some technology that can read that RFID and identify it, and now you do have that exact you know chain of custody that that Bavik was was speaking to, and those are the types of things that we're we're very interested in helping facilitate because we're you know our from our system we're one of the only systems that I'm aware of that is able to go end to end from that manufacturer through the entire value stream of an independent distributor managing that inventory into a hospital and backwards. So that's that's significant um, savings and opportunity for how much waste is is traditionally taking place in this in this space. Well, and that the, I love that conversation around the relationships between the partners, right? Because that's also what we're seeing with uh, the major RFID adoption across retail and food distribution, food supply, because it's got to be that partnership between. Uh, like in this case, the, the major retailer who may be driving a compliance mandate and all of the supplier community, right? And everybody in between. And, and, it, and it works best, right? When everybody's on board and all the data is in one spot. So um, the fact that, you know, Sergio Health is doing that is, is really commendable. So congrats to you. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, traditionally the, the, these relationships are set up on contract pricing. You know, that's that's one of the, my my passions in is to try to 
change or reframe the discussion with the manufacturers on pricing. I know that that's typically where it goes that you have, you know, the strikers, the Zimmers, the J and J Medtronics, these large manufacturers that have, you know, thousands and thousands of SKUs of, of, of items that are available for them to move the pricing around and make it look like their savings in different areas and, and buckets, but where there's significant, you know, costs on both sides of this is on the logistics management of it. So it's, I really feel like we're getting to a, a breaking point in the, um, in, in healthcare when it comes to how they're negotiating some of these contracts, there needs to be a uh, better, you know, just vendor management of that inventory. You look at the models in retail, things like that, where the manufacturers are helping support and manage inventory levels, uh, as opposed to the way things work currently uh, with med device, where they're reliant on individuals like me that were not, are not logistics people. They're, they're salespeople that are in supporting cases, yeah. uh, but they do not know how to right size inventory. And it, it creates an environment where they're more concerned about saving inventory for themselves to make sure that they cover their case, as opposed to my partner across town that may need the same inventory, but I don't trust that we're going to be able to move things back and forth. And it creates yeah. a, you know, that ultimately trickles down to patient safety and, and costliness for the manufacturer in the hospital. So there's so many different avenues that that can uh, save a lot of time and money and, and increase safety once those manufacturers start working with the hospitals to improve the supply chain structure of these. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Everybody has their favorite tool, right? We hide those. <laughs> we don't want anyone else to have them. Yep. Uh, maybe they just didn't tell the, the sales field, you know, force that they were also supply chain uh, logistics professionals. They forgot to leave that detail out. Yeah. That's Great point. I mean, you just see, as you get into this, right? I mean, it's it um, it really shows that there is great opportunity. I mean, that to me, that's what this sounds like. Of course, there's you know, at every time we have a challenge, there's great opportunity, and I think it's probably the reason why we wanted to get together today, right? The time the time is now, and there's no need anymore to not change, right? I mean, this there's no reason to live the 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 pain anymore. We can evolve, and we can get better. And just to add there, actually, and I think we, you know, it, this point has been also, we have seen them for like maybe a few years now talked about is, you know, UDI, unique device, unique device identification, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that requirement has become a lot more critical for med device manufacturers. Uh, and I think it's, it's probably one of the most, or one of the biggest driver in, in digitizing the medical assets. Um, and I think, uh, you know, with manufacturers required to provide UDI traceability to their inventory, uh, RFID technology has emerged as a critical component today. Um, and, and I think it, it is also one of the reasons why they are kind of looking into this uh, more closely. Uh, and, and we have seen the interest grow in the last three years, like three to four times, you know. Um, and I, and I, I think this, this will happen eventually. You know, the benefit, like I said, and, and one of the points that I would also mention is, you know, with Zerify uh, working on, you know, innovating the technology and bringing something new, uh, we are actually working also with the device manufacturers in designing the trays and instruments with RFID chip enabled at the point of manufacturing, right? Okay. Uh, which solves the issue of, you know, tagging, uh, retrofitting or upfront. Uh, and, and saves just a lot of time. I think this this is the direction I think the the technology is going to go. The market is going to move towards. Yeah, yeah, that that would be that would definitely be huge. I think though, if if you think about the current state, um, you know, some of the rub back in the day around RFID was that it was expensive, right? Um, but I think today, you know, that's that's another barrier that has been kind of knocked down, right, Jeff and Bavik. I think you're seeing that these. These solutions that you are able to bring to the table, they they are providing our life, right? They're not, they're no longer science projects and they're no longer cost prohibitive. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think the the only way that I expand on that is just, you know, going back to the what I've said, you know, this whole time is <clears throat> I think getting a, a clear starting path landing zone of what you want to accomplish early on um, and not letting perfect be the enemy of good. Uh, yeah. Because you, you, everyone has the benefit of their cell phone that's, you know, that we've had this iPhone that does everything the way that we want it to, even though people still will complain about it and there's issues, <laughs> um, you know, but 
you need to understand where you're starting from and see where can we get these benefits in the short term and achieve an ROI so that we can build on that and continue investing in it. Yeah, it's just astounding to me in, in some of these conversations that we have over there where people will say, well, I'm not interested if I can't do 65 different things within the hospital. <laughs> And it's like, well, where you're at right now is on pen and paper. If that's not better than where you're at right. today, then I, I'm sorry, then it doesn't make a lot of sense for us. So that it does take some of that, um, you know, visionary perspective of it. But there's a lot that you can accomplish in the short term, and that's ultimately how change gets made. And and actually, and that's a great point, Jeff. And I, I you know, to add to that. There is a lot of education still required, learning that's required. Um, when we speak to, you know, these health institutions and device manufacturers, they do require a lot of education uh, even today, right? So they are trying to learn what the technology can do. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think the best way that, you know, we push really is you have to divide phase-wise. You know, you just cannot implement everything in one go. Uh, right. We have to uh, have short milestone. And, and achieve those milestones, which will eventually become the larger milestones, you know. So starting with, you know, a pilot with, you know, you know several uh, ORs and maybe a few, you know, you know, trays, hundreds of trays and things like that. Uh, and then expanding and using it uh, to see, you know, how the infrastructure can be grown and, and, and then the benefits will eventually come out, you know. And like Jeff said, they're using pen and paper today. A lot of them are not even having any tracking system in place. Uh, and for them, the benefits with what this technology can provide is tremendous, right? And this is the best out there today, um, you know, in terms of how you can balance the infrastructure, you know, the speediness uh, and also the cost. Um, and, and, and I think like, you know, we spend a lot of time educating uh, and just talking about what the real expectation is with, you know, something like this. And it, it's not, you know, something, and we, you know, I get silly questions as well, you know, if, can this be uh, tracked inside a patient's body, for example? I just got that email yesterday that can we use RFID to track inside patient's body? So there is a lot of education that is required. Um, but, you know, we are, <laughs> and I, I, I was, you know, I, I replied telling that, uh, you know, you would still need x-rays and, you know, the MRI scans to know what's inside the body. But RFID can, right to the point of uh, patient, we can scan everything, right? We know what's, being used for patient care. Uh, yeah. Once it's inside uh, a patient, we know that something has been missing uh, because we were we are tracking it down through the OR. Uh, but once it's inside, uh, you you know RFID or any technology uh, in this space cannot do uh, much. Yeah, what I'm thinking, you know, where we might kind of close this conversation is around the data because I was thinking like a lot of the systems and solutions that we implement, right? It's right. What's expected and what's unexpected. Um, and I think Jeff, you you opened kind of thinking about this, say how your software starts to present out data. Can you talk to us a little bit about um, the types of insights maybe that some um, hospitals and healthcare facilities are, are finding using um, some of the tools and the way that you're presenting the data? Yeah, I think uh, just at a, it started off by saying it just provides a reliable baseline. Um, just from a, a process standpoint, out of many facilities, it's, they're reliant on individual human scanning of a barcode, right? So anytime you're reliant on that person to start the clock on something, when we're talking about throughput of inventory, because that's ultimately you know the space that we're in of processing this tray through, making sure it's ready for another procedure, it provides a more reliable benchmark of what's our throughput. You know, because this department that that we're help that we work with, they don't even have a reliable productivity model. So having some things and standards that are in place that are reliable from a data perspective, because I heard an interesting comment the other day where someone asked them how reliable their data was. And they, I think the response was it's well, it's it's healthcare data, so it's that reliable. And it's like that's kind of a joke because yeah. it's all so convoluted and confusing right now. Uh, but anytime you have some of these pieces that are reliable, that we know every time this tray comes through and come, and is opened up through that door, it's going to ping it and start the clock. Those are those are invaluable, realistically, in the long term to understand what that throughput is and then how we can adjust it. And then we don't get into the argument of, oh, well, now we need to work on human process of scanning a tray every time. Now it becomes, hey, some of these things are offloaded. 
it's more reliable data points that we can then build upon and improve productivity or look at productivity or look at where the inventory is in real time or be able to find that asset a lot more rapidly in a, you know, I know it's fewer and further between, but I've been in procedures where we stop the procedure and we sit and wait for 20 minutes while someone looks for inventory and makes it available. And the impact to the patient on that, and especially the pocketbooks of a hospital, those are minutes that are that are some of the most costly in, in the world. So that's what we look at is there's a lot of different opportunities to improve efficiencies because there's just not a lot reliable, a lot of reliable measurement of it today. Um, and this provides that that kind of baseline and then significant opportunities that I'm not even you know smart enough to be able to figure out. That's that's where I start bringing in the data people that have been so frustrated with, well, it's not reliable because this, this or this because of human interaction. Well, now we have some of this uh, oversight that is reliable that we can compare it to and set some expectations and benchmarks. Um, it, it's really just scratching the surface on a lot of this. It makes me think like, like when you have reliable data, like everybody involved, there's like this peace of mind, right? It's just Absolutely. great. And then I was thinking too, um, so that's like from the user, but then the leadership to be able to effectively plan. I mean, correct. it's just, I think every single human understands the criticality of that now. Absolutely. And, and that, you know, just to add on that, I think, uh, you know, like how, how Jeff mentioned, you know, even with, you know, automating stock replenishment, you know, tracking deliveries, optimizing just-in-time inventories with real-time data uh, and analytics. I think all of those will help uh, the leadership to understand where they can better spend their dollars, you know. So um, I, I think it all eventually is coming down to data uh, analytics and data mining. And I think, uh, you know, today we have all the hardware infrastructure in place to give them, you know, the autonomous benefits at the same time with, you know, this you know, uh, data company like uh, Jeff's, and, you know, they can provide them, you know, all the best dashboard and the reports, uh, which will help the leadership take the right decision, you know, and in, in, in spending, you know, how they would be doing in with the dollar values. So RFID, now is the time in the healthcare space, right? Let's, let's, uh, let's all kind of raise our hands and, and say, let's, let's start to get involved. Um, I love the the approach that both of you brought to the table. It mirrors how barcoding, how we approach uh, from a process people first and then technology. I think it's so critical to look at process and people first because typically, right, the technology we know is going to work. Right. <laughs> right? We, know, we know that. That's the guarantee. Like, that's the given. We know how that works. That's like the laws of physics. But the the humans... And the processes that we need to modify and change are are typically the the ones that we have to get right first, right? Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Well, we are coming to the end of our conversation, and I I thought, and I know that we have thrown a lot at the viewers. So typically, what I like to do at the end is just a quick, um, a couple key takeaways. So you know, if you think back to everything we talked about and what you really want to maybe say directly to the audience and the viewers watching. Um, what are a couple of key things that you just want people to remember have stick in their brains? Um, so, Bavik, I'll start with you. Um, it, you know, this is all about patient care, uh, patient safety, and, you know, better management of, you know, uh, the staff's time. Uh, I think it, it, it is important, very important today. Uh, and if there is a process that helps them save more time, uh, and allocate that time for uh, patient care. Um, you know that's that's where it should be. Uh, that's how it should be. And and with the technology today that's out there, that's you know works uh, with RFID and data mining together. Uh, I think it will help institution, device manufacturers, and everybody in between. Uh, just better management with operation efficiency. And I think that's that's the need of the R. I think. Uh, it's now uh, more than ever, you know, it's now. I love it. All right, Jeff, how about you? Yeah, I, I would just expand on that, that, um, you know, anytime that you have the patient safety piece being being addressed, uh, but that's only one component of this too. And, and that's, you know, that that's the tip of the spear, but the other benefits end up being cost savings and efficiencies. 
And that is what every hospital is looking for anymore. Uh, and, and where I would, you know, just really stress is, is having some more conversations about this. How are you leveraging technology today? How are you setting yourself up for the future? I mean, I don't think anyone is going to dispute. You need to move towards technology and embrace it. And the further that you push it off, the only, you're just setting yourself up for failure in the future. So there's so many different opportunities for applications. Uh, I just urge you know anyone out there that's interested to start having discussions with Bavik, myself on on where there's application opportunities. Not letting perfect be the enemy of good. You need to start somewhere. You know if you aren't able to do the the to the level that you're looking for today, you don't just stop trying on it. And so you need to reframe your expectations. And, uh, and move towards something that is achievable to get to that point. There, there's not a silver bullet for this when you're coming from nothing. So there's uh, so many different opportunities and applications. Um, you know, people like Bavik are, have, have seen everything in the space. So I'm happy to have more conversations as people are interested. Love it. The journey of a thousand miles is, starts with one step, right? That's yeah. exactly right. So I really appreciate your time here today, Bavik, Jeff, um, have learned so much. I uh, really appreciate the expertise and the leadership that you all are providing to the healthcare space. Um, I don't know if you know this, but since so much resonated from a barcoding perspective, and we affectionately call ourselves supply chain geeks, I feel like you guys are definitely, uh, may not have thought of yourself of that before, but you're definitely in the game. So welcome to the Supply Chain Geek Club, <laughs> Jeff and Bobic. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I'll, I embrace that. <laughs> <Awesome. laughs> so that's where we're going we're gonna to have one final question. I usually like to throw some unscripted curveball at people. Uh, and so since I've now dubbed you Supply Chain Geek, I'd love to know, what is something that you just absolutely geek out about uh, in, in your life? Uh, it doesn't have to be RFID um, or, or healthcare. It can be something unrelated to our conversation. So um, what's something that you just absolutely geek out and you nerd about? Um, Bavik, I'll start with you. Um, I, I'll, I'll be honest, in the last few years, um, AI has been of great interest to me. Um, you know, I, and just not, what's out there to like chat GTP, but in general, you know, over the years, you know, how it can help, uh, you know, on the consumer level also day to day, you know, it can be used at your homes also, right? Uh, not just in your workspace. So I think AI today is very intrigued for me. Uh, I am, you know, spending a lot of time just, you know, playing around with a lot of uh, devices uh you know softwares and and just learning on how this this helps the world in the future and i think this is this is all going to be connected together with what we are doing today in our space as well so uh artificial intelligence is something i'm very very uh you know interested to you know explore over the years i love it all right so geeking out about ai jeff what about you are you geeking out? Um, I, I don't know necessarily specific which bucket it, it falls into. I guess it'd probably be somewhere around like big data or leveraging data. But I've been like I have the the whoop here that I've had for I think five plus years now. So I it, like I look at this as very similar to kind of what we've been discussing today. Like if it, once you start wearing that and observing the different changes, inputs, outputs that you get from it and just learning about, or they've done a, a fantastic job on the Whoop platform to explain different things that, that are impacting, you know, your body and your, and your choices. And I think that it even lends itself to what Bavik is saying with AI is now that there's some structured data and feedback, I look at this as an investment in myself in the future to be able to see how my body reacts to things. And it's very similar to you know, even in, in the hospitals and manufacturers, you have to start beginning tracking. Um, I know it's kind of uh, ends up being a little bit of a sales pitch, but this is why I really believe in this stuff. <laughs> yeah, like, company, yeah. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. I like how you, you had, you know, bring in this uh, connection and I, I that's great. You know, we like it. 
Yeah. Well, I, I mean, it, it's so true though. Like if, if these people in, in healthcare and in devices, they want a lot of change, but many of them are, aren't willing to take the first step to begin tracking and measuring it. And you don't get change without those pieces. So that's really where my head goes is to at a baseline, it starts with each, each person individually. And I look at the, the, what I do with this as kind of similar to it. Well, I was going to go with something completely different. I was going to say I've been geeking out about golf. But... <laughs> oh, no, I, I'm with you on that one, too. So, <laughs> you know, actually, and, and to add to that, actually, I've been um, playing. I, I used I play tennis a lot, but I have been playing pickleball a lot more. Oh, now. Yeah, a lot of people resonate with that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to say our, our original call on this, I think Bavik and, and the rest of his team, we spoke for, for about pickleball for the first 15, 20 minutes. I love it. Well, Scott Scottsdale, let me know. We'll play. Topic for another huddle over another day, I guess. The, the, the big data, uh, you know, how we can analyze a pickleball game. But actually, the golf. The, the funny thing is, is that the golf uh, that I've been participating in, it's just like you're mentioning, Jeff. Like they analyze every single statistic of your swing. Things that I never even thought about. All these. Oh, Oh, it is nuts. So. I have some friends that have a, a golf technology company, and that's the stuff that we've been discussing too. Is like because then that feeds back to yeah. analytics that you know you have a track man, or they'll have a they have a launch monitor that they'll be coming out with also, where now you know about swings and different issues that people have, and now you can directly address those with manufacturers that make products to address right. your slice or or any of those things. And it's it's valuable. It's kind of big brother ish, but. <laughs> And and will it actually make any of us better golf learning? Probably not. But we'll we'll buy more things. It requires some. It still always just requires some practice. Hey, yeah. If you if you follow the data and the reports and and what the recommendation is, you will definitely improve. That's exactly right. Exactly. I yeah, really like it. We like it. Well, nice it, it's been an absolute pleasure having you both on the barcoding huddle. Thank you, Zerify, for sponsoring this conversation. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff and Sergio Hall, for joining us and bringing your expertise to the table. As always, if you like what you saw here today, there's lots more goodness on the Barcoding YouTube channel. So check out and subscribe uh, and see, see more videos like this. You can also contact us at barcoding.com. And if you're interested in talking with Bob and Jeff, you can certainly come through uh, myself and Barcoding. We will point you in the right direction, get those introductions made. So again, uh, barcoding.com, easy peasy to remember and uh, find us there. Yes, not just barcodes, RFID too. <laughs> so um, thank you again, Zerify. We appreciate it. And thank you, Jeff. Um, have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.